Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is actually a lot more complicated than people on the internet tend to make it seem, okay? Like, there's so many different schools of thought surrounding it. There's so many different bodies of evidence that demonstrate that, oh, this triggers a fatty liver, or this triggers a fatty liver, or here's what you do to reverse it. But what we have to do is we have to look at the evidence, we have to look at the data, and realistically, we have to look at what is sustainable for us so that we can maintain it over the long haul. Because if we get there once, we make ourselves overweight, obese, we develop a fatty liver, and then we lose weight, and then we gain weight again, chances are that's gonna come right back. So sustainability is one of the most important things. And what I wanna talk about today is something called the 5-2 approach. It's not even really an intermittent fasting technique, but it's something that we're starting to see some cool research in when it comes down to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So this particular study was published in the journal JHEP Reports, and it's pretty darn new here in 2021, okay? This took a look at 74 people with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and for 12 weeks, they had them do three different kinds of diets. They had them either do a low-carb, high-fat diet, which we've seen in quite a bit of evidence being uh, you know, pretty darn good for a fatty liver, okay? Seems to be, right? Then we had what's called the 5-2 approach, which I'll explain in a little bit, but the 5-2 approach I've talked about on my channel. That is where you eat essentially ad libitum, kind of whatever you want, just within, you know, normal amount of calories for five days out of the week, and then two days out of the week, you eat at 25% of your normal calories. So it's five days normal, two days either fasting or severe caloric restriction very sustainable approach and one of my favorite methods. The other thing that they tested is the standard of care, like the normal diet advice someone would get uh, just to be quote unquote healthy if they were you know, shown to have statosis or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. What's interesting is the data was pretty cool. The low carb, high fat group and the 5-2 group had very similar results in the reduction of statosis, the reduction of overall just fatty liver. So what they saw is that the low carb high fat group had a 7.2% reduction, the 5-2 group had a 6.1% reduction. So you might look at that and say, I'm gonna get a more aggressive approach growing low carb than I would with this 5-2 strategy. That might be the case, but that 1% difference is fairly negligible when you understand that the 5-2 approach, you're not even having to restrict carbohydrates. You're simply restricting calories aggressively two days out of the week, making it one of the most flexible and sustainable ways to modulate insulin resistance, to modulate statosis, to be able to really get your, get your life back on track. Not to say that a low carb, high fat protocol isn't great. There are multiple bodies of evidence that demonstrate that that is a great method for a fatty liver. Okay, but what's really interesting here, the standard of care, like normal, just eat healthier kind of diet advice, there was only a 3.6% improvement in statosis. Now let's expand for just a second. If you do want to do the low carb, high fat approach, that doesn't mean that you don't enjoy your life. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Lots of people that watch this channel are doing low carb, high fat. It's what I did to lose 100 pounds. I completely understand the sort of loyalty to that group. Uh, if you want some things that are a little bit more like tasty and cheat worthy on a low carb, high fat group, I put a link down below for Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto has some really awesome bars. They have these keto cookies, which are just unreal. So you can feel like you're having a little bit of fun too. They're today's video sponsor and they in no way are associating themselves with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I don't wanna you know, make that point at all. I'm just saying if you're doing keto, you're doing low carb, it might be a good idea for you just to have something a little bit fun every now and then so you can be more sustainable because the best diet approach, no matter what, is the one that you can stick to. So there is a link down below to save a few bucks because they're a big supporter on this channel. They help us out, allow us to create what we create, and they're one of the few companies that has that Tom Lauer stamp of approval. So that link is down below for their cookies and for their bars. So make sure you check them out. That link is down below. So then when you look at the 5-2 group versus the low-carb, high-fat group, there was a slight improvement in liver stiffness with the 5-2 group versus the low carb group and markedly better than the standard of care group. So we have a little bit of a give and a take. The low carb high fat group was better at overall just fatty liver reduction, but the 5-2 group seemed to improve that liver stiffness a tiny bit better. So it's kind of six in one, half a dozen in the other. You're getting some benefits here, some slightly less benefits here, but then vice versa if you look at other categories. Okay. But the most important thing, if you ask me, the subjects that did the 5-2 approach said that it was very easy to tolerate. It was overall a very well-tolerated design for them. And it was something that they could continue to do for a longer period of time. 
What good is a reduction in fatty liver if a year or two later it's just going to rebound back? I would rather have a slightly lower reduction and be able to maintain that. Okay. Caloric restriction in general may improve a fatty liver simply because you're helping out your body in terms of not cramming so much nutrition into the liver. There's a lot of mystery as to what exactly contributes to a fatty liver. Okay, there is some evidence that high levels of fructose contribute to a fatty liver. There's a lot of evidence that demonstrates that overconsumption of carbohydrates can lead to the hepatocytes storing, holding onto those triglycerides, right? There's a lot of evidence there. There's also a lot of evidence that saturated fat in copious amounts can contribute to a fatty liver, right? So we have to look at all equations. If saturated fat can contribute to a fatty liver, then maybe that's something we need to modulate as well. So no matter what kind of approach you take, whether it's caloric restriction, whether it's going to be low carb, high fat, or it's a 5-2 approach, there's a few check boxes you probably want to make sure that you're checking off. Okay, you're not overdoing the carbohydrates, check box number one. You're prioritizing the protein, check box number two. Okay, you're still keeping saturated fat, even if you're low carb, under control. So make sure you check that box. I would recommend no more than like 20 or 25% of your total fat calories coming from saturated fat. Okay, you should be leaning into more olive oil, avocado oils, things like that whenever you possibly can. Okay. And then another thing is you don't want to be consuming too much fructose or high fructose corn syrup in one sitting. So let's say you're doing the 5-2 approach. You know you have some flexibility with your calories, so you say, I'm going to consume 200 grams of high fructose corn syrup by way of soda. Well, there's plenty of evidence that demonstrates that that's probably not a good thing, okay, for multiple different reasons. So you definitely need to check that box and say, okay, maybe I'm going to limit my fructose. And this is just a little bit, you know, anecdotal, my own experience. I would say, 50 to 60 grams per day as the upper limit of fructose, which is actually a fair bit of fructose. You'd have to be eating a lot of fruit to get to that. So I would kind of suggest keeping those levels a little bit lower. One other thing that I might recommend is if you are doing a 5-2 approach, on the two days that you are restricting calories to 25%, my recommendation would be actually doing a one meal a day type approach on those days. That way you're not just you know, trying to get 500 calories throughout the course of the day. That's just miserable, right? Like if you were to say, I can only eat 500 calories today, that means you get up 180 calories for breakfast, 200 calories for lunch, whatever. Like you're there. And then you, what do you do? Skip dinner. So it's like you can have these really small amounts throughout the course of the day. That's just not fun at all. It's not sustainable. On those fasting days, you're going to get more benefit if you actually fast and say, okay, two days out of the week on the weekends, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fast and then I'm just gonna consume 500 calories in a one meal fashion, two days per week. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, that way you get the fasting benefits, which may arguably be extra good for fatty liver. Again, the evidence is still kind of confusing out there, but when we look at overall just mass consumption of food, that seems to be the biggest issue, right? So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow.